Hey, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to set up uh, my uh, day night cycle prefab uh, and also at the end a little bonus treat how to set up real time global illumination in Unity slash VR chat. So this is a uh, prefab that allows you to control a uh, day night cycle, um, which you're about to see. And what you need for it is you first need to grab the package from either my GitHub or um, my booth here. And so just go here and then go here and then download this. This is a fork of a prefab as you can see um, by Nova Max who made it in this world which you may have seen. You also need to grab before that and also install is Udon Sharp, obviously the VRChat SDK, uh, and then this simple clouds asset which is free on the asset store so if you already have a world you can just go install all of those packages but if you're going to create a new one uh, something i've been wanting to do is show you how to start up a world with a uh, world creator assistant though this may become at least this very version may become um, obsolete in just a little bit like in a month or so because the um, uh, new vr chat standalone creator companion app is uh, already in open beta anyway so what you can do now with the not open beta is you can go here uh, create a new project and then wait for that to open go here and then this is where you install this package which you'll need in a moment so once that scene is open what you do is you drag in this here world creator assistant and also copy this address uh, import that and then go up to Varnian world creator assistant use VRC SDK 3 of course and then add custom unity package paste in the link that you had before up here control V of course and then select the day night cycle udon as a custom package that you want to import with everything else reset these unused lighting settings uh, you don't have to import any of these but you can if you want nothing is required for this though and then for these you need udon sharp and you need cyanemu uh, that's another thing i forgot to mention either download cyanemu or client sim whatever is the uh, standard at the time that uh, as of recording it's signing your client sim does not work with the current version of the vrc sdk only the beta version as of recording so as of this video being published use signing i'm also gonna use vr world toolkit and easy quest switch because there's some things that we're going to use with both of those later on in this tutorial and then you can install any of the downloaded unity asset store packages you have here um, so I'm going to do the BFW Simple Dynamic Clouds and then continue. And yep, just continue. It'll install everything. Might take a few minutes. Okay, after that's done installing, just close this window. And the first thing we're going to need to do is actually go into the Lighting tab. If you don't have that already, go to Window, Rendering, Lighting Settings. And we need to change this Environment Lighting from skybox to color this is essentially the ambient lighting that comes from sources other than the sun like for example if you go out on a sunny day and you look at a shaded surface you'll notice that it's not pitch black and that's because lighting comes from everywhere not just from the sun it comes from well the entire sky the entire sky is blue so the lighting on that shaded surface will also be blue and well that changes throughout the day so when the sky is more pink or orange during the evening during sunset or during sunrise well then the ambient lighting will also reflect that same with when it's dark outside the sky is black so the ambient lighting will be black this color don't matter it'll be controlled by the script so then you want to go into the day night cycle udon folder and we have two example scenes here this one is a very basic sample scene and then this one is a more advanced sample scene with real-time global illumination all set up so what you want to do is you want to go into window sign emu sign emu settings make sure that's on if you have client sim make sure that's on obviously and then you can go into play mode and i can guide you through 
the different options that are available on this prefab. So if you press C to crouch down here, you'll see this is the toggle for the cycle settings. So you can change the time of day. And you can also change the speed at which, you know, the cycle goes. Um, so here you see this local toggle and you see master only if not local. So the thing is, is that only the master can control the time of day and then it will be synced with everyone else in the world. But if you're not the master, you can't change the time of day or the speed unless you click this local toggle. Then you can change the time of day and speed, but you will be the only one who sees the changes and you will not be synced with all of the other players in the world. Here you can see the reflections toggle and behind me I have a perfectly reflective sphere. Very unrealistic, but it's useful for testing what the reflections does. As I go through different times in the day, you can see that the reflections change. This is the way that Unity deals with reflections is with reflection probes. And since while the reflections would change throughout the day, there are four different states that you can set this reflection probe to be, and they will change appropriately depending on the time of day. But if you don't want reflection probes, then you can turn reflections off and the reflections will essentially be black. There's also the shadows option, which will toggle shadows on and off for the sun, aka the directional light. There's also the credits, which shows that this is the original script that was by Novamax, and then I made the prefab fork, and other world creators can find it here. So there are some settings you can adjust for this prefab. This is the prefab. You can just drag it and plop it into a world just like that. So here is the UI settings. You can adjust this to your liking. Here is the sun. You can adjust its intensity. You can also adjust its indirect intensity as well. And here is the brain. You actually have to play it if you want to see how your changes affect the world. So here you can see, you can change what color you want the sun to be. You can change the color you want the clouds to be. You can change the ambient lighting color. You can change what color the stars are at night. You can even change the moon color if you want. Let's set up a new scene so they can show you how to bake the cube maps for the reflection probe. So go right click on the hierarchy, create, and then new scene. You actually should delete the directional light that comes by default and then just add a plane reset the position, and then drag in the day-night cycle prefab. Reset position, ERC world, reset position, move it a bit back, and then you can also, you know, set this surface to something that's not so insanely bright. So then go into here, and go into this reflection probe and now control s to save and then play with cyanemu or client sim you're going to want to go to the different times that you want the reflection probe to take a capture of the scene so go here set the speed to zero but here's the thing you first want to make sure that you set your objects that are static as static so that they can be baked into the reflection probe or the cube map that the reflection probe makes. You can also increase the resolution here. I would say 128 is probably preferable for VRChat worlds. So you can bake again. And then repeat that process for the other cube maps that you need to bake. So the one for dawn is right when the sun comes up like about there. One for midday, right in the middle of the day, of course, when the sun is directly overhead. And then one for dusk, 
right after the sun sets, when you can see a yellow fog over the horizon. And then exit out of Cyanemu, exit out of play mode, go to the day-night controller, and then plug those cube maps into their respective slots. Save, and then if you need to update those cube maps later, you don't have to go through that whole process again, only part of it. Go into Cyanemu again, go to whichever time of day, stop speed, and then press bake, and it will update without having to show you the file manager and having to go through that whole process again. I also said at the beginning that I'd show you how to set up real-time global illumination. It's not very difficult. Here you can see I have real-time GI in this scene so that there is a bright blue or cyan wall here, sunlight hitting it, and then the indirect lighting spilling out onto the white concrete surface here. If I rotate the sun this way, then against this magenta wall, you can see that the hot pink of the wall is spilling out onto the white concrete surface here. And if I turn up the indirect multiplier, you can see that even more. So all you have to do to do that is go back into the lighting tab and turn on real-time global illumination. And here you can see with and without. And then just click generate lighting. Again, make sure that you set your static objects to static. And note that real-time global illumination only works with static objects properly, but it also, of course, does support light probes. So place those in your scene, too, to make sure that the dynamic objects in your scene, like pickups or players and their avatars, also get shaded properly. And also making sure that there is a proper reflection probe in the scene will make your dynamic objects blend even better together with the static ones. Also, if you're going to make the World Quest compatible, you can go into Window, Easy Quest Switch, add a new object, click on Sun, and then drag the light component into this slot. And then for the shadow type, set it to None for Quest, so it can save performance. Quest is, of course, far less capable than a PC, so this should be the default. And then you would also want to go into this toggle. You want to set is on to off when it's running on Quest. Also, if you didn't already know, you can go to VR World Toolkit, Post Processing, and then Set Up Post Processing to, well, set up post processing in your scene. You can also go to Auto Exposure and then turn that down a little bit to help if your world is, say, very dark. You should, of course, put a toggle for your post-processing if you have it in the scene so players can turn it off if they want to. Also, having sliders for specific components like the bloom is very much appreciated. That pretty much covers it. Um, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Uh, I put a lot of time and effort into making this, and I'm just giving it away for free. I want to see what everyone can do with it. If you can make a better version of it, then I implore you to do so. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I should also have a tutorial on the Bakery Light Mapper out by the end of the month. That's all I have to say here. Thanks for watching, and thanks for all my patrons who support me. Bye.